LeBron struggles with the heat all started with one of his best shots of the night. After the offensive rebound, he looked as if he thought there was no time on the shot clock and had to toss up a desperation heave. But on the next possession, after playing some defense, you can see him overheating and needing a break. No evidence of cramping yet, but he was obviously struggling from fatigue. And in what may have been a big mistake by Spolstra, LeBron only got three minutes of rest in that third quarter before playing eight straight minutes over the course of the third and fourth quarters. And the Heat were in great shape, having forced 22 turnovers and nursing a four-point lead. The Spurs just about throw the ball away again on an unforced error, but Diaw saves the ball and LeBron simply can't move well at all, not following his man towards the loose ball, then not rotating down fast enough on the penetration and dump off to Duncan. And I can't blame him, as you can see he's now struggling with walking and in great pain as the cramps increase. Without LeBron, the Heat still have control of this game halfway through the fourth, and the Spurs run a very strange play, and I think Diaw just got lost. He starts out in Duncan's way, then backscreens Duncan, who doesn't use it, and then he finally screens the ball and floats out towards the weak side. Now, it looks like they were spreading the floor to give room for a Duncan post-up. Dwayne Wade takes the bait from Diaw's pass fake, leaving Danny Green wide open for a skip pass corner three. The Heat come down and run a floppy set that gets Ray Allen a nice curl into the lane. However, he gets way too fancy with the finish and misses the double pump lefty drive. The Spurs hurry to get back down the court and watch what happens. Ray Allen has green until he sees that Lewis stop to help on the green drive. While Ray picks up Diaw in the corner, the Heat defense does not communicate, mainly Lewis yelling to Allen to go get his man again. But just look at this gorgeous hesitation hook pass from Diaw across court to the open green. At this point, LeBron started to look like he was suffering from heat exhaustion. Desperate to get a basket, the Heat turned to horns, and they had some success by simply having their high post entry turn into a drive to the hole. Meanwhile, watch how the Heat defense has lost some of its aggressiveness, allowing the Spurs to play catch with one another until late in the shot clock, Manu and Duncan play a little two-man game. There's the short roll by Duncan, and he has the choice of hitting a hot Danny Green in the corner or finishing the shot himself. While Wade has looked a lot better than he did in last year's finals, trying to ISO on top and get to the hoop ends up being a poor decision. He jumped off the right foot trying to shoot with the right hand. And because the Heat were running a floppy, all five players are below the free throw line. Once Duncan gets the rebound, there's no one back to stop Danny Green on the huge tomahawk. After the initial action of the offense, the Heat stagnate, making it much easier for the defense to get ready. DL funnels him towards the box, and I'm amazed a guy in that much pain can still finish. But that was it for LeBron, as the cramps overwhelmed his body, and he had to check out and get on the bench. With a two-point lead, the Spurs run a beauty of an out-of-bounds play. The pitch towards the left side makes the defense think they're going to post up Diaw on the left block, but after pitching, Duncan sets the pin down for Green, and Ray is too slow recognizing this. Unable to get LeBron back in the game, the Heat gamely forge on, but Wade can't get this referee's call on this nice shot fake. On the way back down, Boss tries to front DL, but since it's so early in the possession, there is no weak side help and Manu throws the perfect lob. The Spurs are up by 7, LeBron is stuck on the bench, and that means game over.